So in the previous video, we have seen how do you run Python code online. But then I want this setup in my machine. So how do you get this setup? See, it's very simple. When you write a code, of course, you want to execute somewhere. And where you're going to write the code? You can use Notepad or you can use any editor for that matter. Example, if I open my Notepad and if I type a command or let's say if I want to print something and I'm going, I'm going to explain what this print and stuff later. But let's say if I say print hello, I want to execute this and when I'm going to do this and that's where you need the Python interpreter. So to do that, go to the official website of Python and Intentionally, I'm saying official is because there are a lot of places where you can get the Python setup, but it, they, are, they might be malicious. So better to go on the official website and go to downloads and based on which OS you're working with. So if you're working with Windows, select that. If you're working with Mac and other, other platforms, I'm using Windows here. I will click on Windows. And in this, you have multiple versions. Version of Python as well as the version of Windows we are working with. Example, if, you're, if your Windows machine is 64-bit, like i5, i7, Ryzen. So you can go with the Windows installer 64. If you are using the ARM-based chip, you can check that or with your laptop and desktop. If it says ARM processor, go with this one. Now, since in this machine, I got Intel chip that to the 64-bit, I will go with this version. Even the Windows is 64-bit, I will click on this. And before I do that, uh, make sure that you download the stable version. The problem is if you download the pre-release version, which might have few extra features, but then all these beta versions are not fully tested properly. And if something goes wrong, you have no idea what's going wrong. Is it you or your Python setup? Uh, see, of course, once you understand the language better, once you have built certain projects, you can try out the pre-release version. But now at this point, I, would, I won't suggest you to go with this. Go for stable version, click on this, and it will download. Now, I do have the setup already downloaded. Now, before you do this, in fact, I wanted, I wanted you to check one more thing, which is, do you already have Python in your machine? If you have, then that step was not required, but I don't think anyone will have by default if you have not worked before on Python. Okay, so now open your terminal, and how do you check if you have Python or not? Just type Python and version. And if you see something like this by saying Python was not found, that means you don't have it. Also, sometime, you know, when when you install Python 3, that's the latest version of Python, sometime you get Python 3 as well. So check with this command as well, Python 3, and make sure you don't have any of that. If you don't have any of that, then you can install Python. So download it and then click on this simple installation. It will open this prompt. Now on the first screen, make sure that you take this, add python.exe to path so that you don't have to manually do all the process of setting the path. The why someone will do this is because when you save the files of Python, you store it in some other folder. The Python setup will be some other folder. So there you have to link the path then. If you don't want to do that, just take this and click on install now. Simple setup, you have. You might have to say next at some point and it will be done. So it's happening, 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 taking some time. Okay, so Python installed successfully. That's what I'm getting. Okay, so how to verify this? Go to your terminal and say Python version and when you say enter, it will not work. But you will say, hey, you got Python there. It's not working anymore. See, the thing is, uh, when you install software and when you try to run, run the command, you have to make sure that you reopen your terminal. And why I'm saying that is because people do miss it and then they feel bad. Hey, we have done all the setup still not working. It's because you forgot to reopen your terminal. Now, once you reopen it, just try it now and it will work. Cool, right? But in case if Python is not working, try Python 3. If that works, you still should be happy. But if that work, if Python 3 works and then you want to say, hey, you know, I want, I'm happy with this command. I don't want Python 3. Then you can change it. There's allies you can use. Ask the AI models and it will give you the answer. How do you do the allies? Anyway, so for me, the Python command is working. So I will just work with that. Now, once you have Python installed, what you can do is you can open the Python prompt. See, if you have Python installed and in the terminal itself, if you say, hey, you know, I got print. I want to execute a Python function or Python statement. If I say enter, you can't run your Python code directly here. You basically need a prompt, Python prompt. 
And the way you can get that is go to your terminal and just say Python and say enter. When you do this, you will get a pop-up here or you will get something which says uh, Python did with the version and these three arrows here. That means now you can execute your Python code here. Now, which code I want to execute? I will stick to my print. So I will say hello, enter, and you got hello there. Congratulations. This is your first step to run Python code on your machine. So that's how you print hello here. Okay, but then what if you have multiple lines of code, not just one, maybe 10 lines of code, maybe 100, maybe 1000. Not a good idea to have all the lines of code in one file, but let's say imaginary stuff. How will you do that? Of course, you can type all the statements here, but then if you do that, how will you debug? How will you modify? A lot of problems, right? In that case, you need a place where you will type the code. Not here. I don't want to type in prompt. I will just say exit, come out. Now, once you're out, go to your notepad and type the code here, as I did here. So you can see if it says print hello. But then how will you execute this file? It's very simple. Just save this. Now, when I'm going to save this, I will just store that in a C drive. So the C drive create the folder as Python codes or wherever you want to store it. And in fact, I will just use another thing. Also Python prax because Python code I'm using for some other thing. So we got Python prax here and give a name to your file. So I'm giving demo here. Any file name will do. Click on save and done. You got your file with your Python code. How do you run it? It should be simple. So type Python, first of all the command Python, and then mention the file name, which is demo.txt. Oh, unfortunately, I don't have this file in this Navin folder. It's in the C drive. So I'll just go back, go back. And now in this, I have a folder called Python Blacks. That's a folder name, clear. And once you are in this folder, you can check in this folder, I have this file, which is demo.txt. And now I can run that command. So Python, and I can mention the demo.txt file name, enter, and it says, hello. Awesome. Okay, this is working. But now the problem is, okay, what's the problem? See, the file name is .txt. Nothing wrong with txt in a major sense. But whenever you create a Python file, make sure that the extension of your file is .py. Again, there's no compulsion. It will still work. But there are certain features which we are going to learn later, like importing, where you need to have Python extension. Next, when you work with the IDEs, I will talk about IDEs later. Imagine a fancy editor in which you can basically, if you want to use that IDE features, which they provide, you need to have dot extension, which is dot py extension. And it is good for readability as well. So when you see some file by dot py, you know that's a Python file. So I will just change this file extension here, save as, and instead of txt, I will say dot py. Now, when I do that, you can see the file is changed. It is demo.py. I can also check there are two files here now. One is .txt, one is .py. And now I will just try to run the command. So demo.py, enter. It says hello. So finally, we are able to run the Python code on the machine. I know a simple code, but, and we are not even talked about what is this print and stuff. We'll talk about that later. At this point, the Python setup is working. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.